time even when we were both at eminence we had we had kind of discussed it um when we were released from uh, eminence when our jobs were eliminated it had to get real then because we both wanted to stay in the industry because it was important to us um you, you don't really get in this industry to to get rich <laughs> we'd, we'd try to do something else if it was for money but, it's, but our passion was about guitar tone we both play um i remember being a young teenager and uh, just guitar tone always got me excited. And I know it does for Josh too. Uh, it's our, our, our passion was, was making better guitar tone. And then as we uh, grew into working men, you know, we got to work with, uh, with, with people that do it for a living like you, Andy. And when, uh, when you can uh, develop a product that goes along with somebody playing for a living, making music, making people happy, that that's that really gets me excited and just being being a part of that my my most the most rewarding thing i get from a speaker designer is is when somebody tries out a new speaker i've done and they can't quit playing because they enjoy it so much so i, I digress a little bit but when uh when jo josh and i started looking for new jobs um we we spoke with dan at misco it, before before we lost our job, it had always been like, where do we get this huge capital to buy equipment to manufacture a speaker? It's a huge investment <laughs> that neither one of us had. Well, that's I think that's a big reason why there's so few manufacturers um, in in the actual speaker game. You actually made a couple of good points. I'd like to guide the conversation towards. One thing is, you know, you guys being in the speaker. You, you get this, you get what I'm about to say, but for the people watching this may not get it. The speaker is the last thing that really carves your sound. And mm -hmm. if you look at Joe Bonamassa playing a tweed, he specifically likes Chinese made Celestian class late eighties. And he actually, in one of his podcasts went down the rabbit hole on, you know, it's not the, it's not what's on the label. He's like a lot of people think, you know, would look at that speaker and be like, oh, this is the cheaper version. You know, it's like, why? But he goes, it sounds better to me. It's the one that I like, you know, and that, that right there, um, better is a, is always, you know, it's like, it's like beauty, beauty and better and guitar tone is in the eye of the beholder. What we all mm -hmm. like is different, you know, um, some people really love like an Al Nico. Some people like a big big fat EV style magnet. It's like, we all like different things and what it does. But what I'm getting at, it's like, it does such a major factor in your sound. Like in my opinion, a speaker and slash cabinet, because they go hand in hand, right? A speaker and a speaker cabinet affect the tone at least as much as the head, at least. Mm -hmm. If I were to put those two high gain heads behind me, if, uh, if anybody is fans, big gain and big, distortion those two amps right there pinnacle style high gain amps right and they're on a cabinet that just happens to have like a 65 watt four 65 watt speakers in it and this cabinet over here has you know 480 watt speakers and there's a 212 mesa over there that's got a different style of speaker and those amps would sound like i was changing amps when i was just changing cabinets like the eq curve the top end the low end all of this stuff it's so fundamentally important and it's always fun when someone realizes that for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love to go and, and, and see guys reaction when you just, even digitally, when you're flipping through an IR and impulse response and people are like, Holy cow, this is really changing my sound. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's like microphones do the same thing. You know, Norman doesn't sound anything like a 57 doesn't sound anything like a 121. These are major factors in your tone. However, we as guitar players, we love to get down to the micro and be like, well, this pickup is an 8.1 on the resistance, and this one's an 8.5, and I really feel it. I'm just like, hey, man, that's great and all, but check this out. This is really going to blow your mind on that difference. So the tone thing, I love, I love that you guys almost take it for granted because you guys – have a, a memory. You know how all three of us, I think, and any guitar player out there watching, we have a memory of what a Telecaster sounds like and a memory of what a Les Paul sounds like and a memory of a Stratocaster. We don't have to try 
to think about what that perfect strat sounds like. It just sounds like it's there. It's already up here. You guys have been in the industry so long that you know what the perfect V30 style speaker, the perfect green, the, you know, and, and God knows how many greenbacks were made over the years and how many variants. And like as materials got cheaper or more expensive, things changed. And that goes into like, yeah, it's still the greenback, but this year's greenback's drastically different from, you know, that year's greenback. So all of this stuff that you guys are in is, like you said, when you were coming from your background on 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 the origins of tone, I, I think it's really easy for you guys to kind of just, oh yeah, you know, we like, I really want to point out that you have a lot of knowledge there and, and your memory, like your recalled tonal memories, like, been around this stuff forever you know um and when you got into like you said wanting to make your own brand it's like that only comes from one point right that only that can only origin from one place and that's like knowing knowing what stuff sounds like